The Flash is a student form for students produced by students. Students make all content decisions, research, write, shoot, and broadcast news stories they deem important to the ECU community. Stay tuned. Good morning, ECU. I'm Ricardo. And I'm Miguel. And here are this week's Flashtastic stories. Our first story comes from Brayden and Khalid talking about misconceptions on the COVID-19 vaccine. We then have Jack reporting on the ECU eSports teams. And lastly, we have Maddie taking a look at the Hewitt honey business. I'm scared. Ricky, you'll be fine. Uh. Well, that was unexpected. But anyways, here's Brayden and Khalid on misconceptions about the COVID-19 vaccine. Since the start of the pandemic, scientists have been working hard to create a vaccine. And on December 14th, COVID vaccinations began in the U.S. With all the misinformation going around, people are confused about if and where they should get the vaccine. I sat down with Brian LaLoop, a director of rehab at Alina, to learn more. So we started giving out the vaccine about a month ago. January 22nd was our first day that our clinic was open for vaccines. I think the biggest thing with people that want to get vaccinated right now is, is finding it. So your options really are your healthcare system. So normally you, each healthcare system has different rules about who can get the vaccine with it. There's also things run by the state and the government just set up a, a website called Vaccine Tracker where you can log on and you can see where vaccines being offered and if you would qualify for being able to get one there. Across Minnesota, there's about 400,000 people taking both doses of the vaccine and about 21,000 of those are from Dakota County. Among those 21,000 is Stephen Smith, a senior here at Eastview. I took my first shot um, about a month ago. I got the Moderna vaccine, so there's four weeks in between. Um, and I work at a retirement home. So it's important that everyone working at the retirement home stays healthy so that it doesn't spread uh, throughout the residence. With the vaccine being developed in less than a year and stories about various side effects, people are pretty skeptical about taking it. Do the pros outweigh the cons? Uh, the side effects that I had from the vaccine were pitiful compared to a bad case of COVID. I, I definitely think that one day of minor side effects, really in comparison to what the disease could be, is much worth it. Even though more and more people are getting vaccinated, things won't be going back to normal for a little while. We have to do things like wash our hands, wear masks, stay physically distanced. Even though more and more people are being vaccinated, we're entering time where we're going to have to do both things for a while until we can just go completely back to normal. Signing off of The Flash, this is Khalid. Okay, I'm back. Uh, that vaccine wasn't too bad. Hopefully things will improve, like Mr. LaLoop said. Let me go. What you doing there? I'm just playing some Madden. Well, did you know you could play video games with kids at the eSports club here at ECU? Really? Yeah. Here's Jack with more on the eSports club at ECU. If you like playing video games, there's a new eSports team at ECU. I had a chance to talk to the captains about what they thought of the eSports team. Well, I love getting to uh, meet new people, play games with uh, new really friends, cool. wow. um, working together, and I don't know, having a great time in games we already really appreciate and enjoy. Students from ECU come together to play games that they love. They're inside. Inside. I really like meeting new people at different grade levels, and we all share the same interest of loving playing games, and I think that's really cool to be in the esports. It's my favorite part. Yeah, I really also like meeting people that like. I normally wouldn't have like any classes yeah, yeah. with because they're like oh, underclassmen or they're not in the same classes as I am. I think it's a pretty exciting and a, a, a very cool addition to uh, Eastview. 
If you're interested in joining, go to EVHS Esports on Instagram and follow the link to the Discord. Signing off for The Flash, this is Jack. Poggers, that was bananas. For more information, you can take a look at the student-led club on the ECU website. Here we go. What you doing there? Well, Ricky, I'm just snacking on some Mario Hewitt honey. I think I've heard of that. Well, here's Maddie with the story on Mario Hewitt's honey business. I started raising uh, bees about 40 years ago. It just so happened that one of my grandchildren really enjoyed the bees. And that special grandchild turns out to be Eastview Junior Mara Hewitt, who took an interest in her grandpa's hobby at only six years old. When he first created the hive, I was kind of there with him, like sharing that experience. She immediately uh, took to the bees. Um, she's never shown any fear uh, working with the bees. The bees have always uh, been very comfortable to be around Mara. Over time, Mara found a joy for every aspect of beekeeping, and her skills became especially important as their honey hobby progressed into something more. My dad saw the potential that um, these kids could run a business, my kids and my niece and nephews. And just this past summer, that potential was turned into a reality as Hewitt Honey was founded, with Mara handling social media and in-person sales, beekeeping, and bottling. Since our business is relatively new, a lot right now is just kind of planning on how to move forward, kind of make our business bigger, larger, get the word out a little bit. When not selling their honey at local markets and fairs, the majority of their revenue comes from social media sales. However, with any seasonal business, challenges can arise. The biggest challenge is just like really keeping your bees like alive and healthy so you can produce as much honey as possible. While producing enough honey for the winter can be difficult, the rewards are what keep them going. It's really nice to be able to do things together. Just like being able to uh, share some of this experience with my family. As the Hewitts continue to grow their business together, they hope to bring awareness to the importance of pollinators. This topic right now that um, bees were on the decline. In our environment today where we understand that without insects that pollinate, uh, we aren't going to have food. People have to respect the fact that we have to maintain environments where pollinators can prosper. Signing off from The Flash with help from Sam and Cooper, this is Maddie. You can find Mara's Honey Business on Instagram and Facebook at Hewitt.Honey, where they sell half a pound for $7 and one pound for $12. Well, Yusu, that's all we have for today. Hope you have a good weekend and stay tuned for the credits. Gosh, I can't wait to be Zooming in class only twice a week. Wait, class starts at 745? Okay, no problem. I'll just set a few alarms. Hmm, maybe just a few more. Ah, perfect. Now I just need to sleep early, so I'll be sure to wake up for tomorrow. Who am I kidding? How can I sleep when there's 500 flashcards I need to study? And besides, <sighs> sleep, sleep is just for the weak. Seriously? Who set up this many alarms? Wait, what time is it? Ugh, curse you early Zoom times.